Hi guys, hope you're doing good. In this video, you're going to learn about first class functions and nested function. Now let me explain you these things with some example. Let me write a program to check whether the given number is an even number or not and return that value if it is an even number and if it is odd, I'm not going to return anything, right? So let me say equal to zero and then I say written n. Now whenever uh, the value which is given is an even number, it's going to return that value back. Now let me save this code and let me create one more file. Let me save this file as So in my program, I'm going to use this uh, even checker uh, function, which is already written, right? So for that, I may need to import uh, the module even because it's already already there. Like, let me say import the module even. If at all you're not aware about what is uh, importing module and how to import module, I've already done a video on that. I've given the link in the description. Please go and watch. Okay. Now uh, let me write a program um, to use this. Uh, let me say n assign int input. Now let me say result assign even dot. I'm going to call the method it's even which is there, and I'm going to pass this n. And let me print the result. So it means that if uh, I'm, go I'm going to get a, a input of number and I'm going to pass that number to the method is even which is there in here in even.py method, sorry, even.py file, right? And um, I'm going to uh, print the result which is given back. Right? Let me run this code for you. Let me give 10, you will get 10 back, right? Uh, let me run this code again. If I give uh, 13, I'll get none. So why do I get none? Because uh, when I say uh, the the number is getting divided, it returns n. If the number is not divided from the method, by default, it returns none. So what should I do to avoid that none to be printed? I can just go and say if or es not equal to none. So if my result is not equal to none, then I'm going to print it. If it is none, I'm not going to print it. So let me run this code again for you. Uh, let me say 13 for you again. I'm sorry. So you're not uh, getting anything back because like uh, if it is not none, I'm not going to print anything, right? Hope you got this. Now, if I'm going to use the same program, like thinking that uh, even checker is there and I'm going to run a, a different program to check for a list of values, right? So this now, this uh, first I've done for uh, checking for a particular number. Now, if I'm going to ch do a program to check for a list of values, let me say my list assign one, two, three, four, five. So I have some list of values. Let me say again, res assign even dot is even, and I'm going to pass my list. Uh, let me try to do the same process. And let me run this code for you. Oops, what we're we getting? We're getting a traceback error because, and I'm trying to pass a list and do the process where I'm doing it for a normal integer, which is not possible, right? So I'm passing an entire list and try to do it with, with just one single variable, which is not possible. So for this, we may need to uh, change the code here, right? We may need to change the code and make sure that I'm getting a list and I do this process repeatedly using a loop and check every number. But this program is not my program. So since it is not my program, I cannot use it. I cannot touch it. I can only like uh, I can only uh, use it here, but I cannot go and change anything to it. Right? I don't have any access to uh, uh, change this program because it is not my program. So what should I do to make this program run? For that, I may need to write a method here let me say let me say like uh, my fun right. and then let us see what we are going to do here 
so without changing the process of this right how to um, without changing the code which is already there but i'm go i want to use it right for some other purpose right how will i do it that is what we are going to see now right so this first class method is a, a first class function is a function which takes any function as argument so it means that i can pass a function itself as argument like before we were like seeing like in functions uh, we we can we have passed uh, values we have passed like uh, uh, list tuple set all kind of things like now we are going to see how to pass a function as an argument to another function so for that like i'll be uh, calling the function here let me say even list and then say my fun already given now here i'm going to pass the already existing function which is there in my program right it's is even right i'm going to pass the function is even which is there in the module even right and i'm going to along with it i'm going to pass my list right. so i'm passing two arguments to this function my list my fun one is the function itself another one is the list now what is it I'm going to do inside? Let us see that. Let me say f even comma list. And here let me create an empty list. Let me say for i in lst, right? So I'm going to get these list values, right? Uh, iteratively one by one, put it inside i. Now here every value what I'm going to get in I and I'm going to pass it to even method is even method here and I'm going to check the value and then return that value again right that is possible right uh, this method helps me to take only one value and check but doesn't uh, uh, take all the entire list that is not possible so what I'm doing is I'm using creating a function called as my fun and here I am passing the even uh, is even method to fun here and I am passing the list here again to LST here I am iterating through the object LST taking every value in I and then I am going to say val assign fun of I now what this will do what is fun now fun is is even right because I am passing is even to fun so this object fun will take is even right you can see when i uh, when i put my uh, arrow here right uh, cursor here you can see is even when i put my cursor here again it's saying is even only because it is taking the value is even right now let me say if val not equal to none then I say rest dot append of val. Now I'm going to append my values to my new list. And finally, from here, I'm going to say return rest. Now I, I'm not changing anything here in is even method, which is already there. I'm just going to process it in a different way by passing the function is even to another function and process it here by taking every value from the list and I'm passing every value to my is even method and which will return back the value if it is even if it is not even it's going to return none so that's the reason I'm checking when val is not none then only I'm going to append I'm not going to append all the values let me clear the screen for you and then execute this program so that you can understand how this program works I uh, forgot to print it. Let me say even list. Let me run it again for you. So you got two and four, all the even numbers. Now this is what called as first class functions. When I pass a function as an argument in the, to another function, that's called as first class functions. Now let us see what is nested function. Whenever I write a, a function within another function, that is called as nested function 
let me write a program for you to make you understand what is nested function let me say outer f u n and then lies let me say name assign samuel and let me write another method called as def inner f u n you can see this inner fun method is coming under the block of outer fun right so this inner function inner fun is coming under this that's why it is called as nested function let me create one more variable called this name and store it as edison let me say prints name and from here i'm going to call the function inner fun and let me say prints name and finally i'm going to call the function out of fun right so let me pull this down a little bit now here all these things right uh, whichever is under this block right or coming under the outer function now let me tell you how this uh, function call works which will be called first which will be accessed first and next in the uh, sequence now when 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 i run this code which line will be executed first yes this is the line which will be executed first outer fun right so this will be the line which will be executed first so from here i am calling the function outer fun right so outer function fun, uh, will be called from here and then it goes here this will be the next line of execution and then this will be the next line of execution i'm initializing the variable uh, name to samuel and then this or get this uh, function in a func is getting uh, uh, defined there but will never be called i'm just defining the function these lines will never be called unless and until i call this function explicitly now this will be line number four this is line number four where my function is getting called inner function right so this is one first i'm calling the outer function it comes here it calls the outer function uh, 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 outer fun function and then initializes the uh, variable name to samuel and then this just will be untouched unless and until it called this never be uh, uh, executed and then it comes here the inner function method is called it goes here now only this is getting called is line number five, uh, fifth, fifth line of execution, and then I'm initializing my variable uh, name to Samuel, and I'm printing sorry Edison, and then I'm uh, printing it. This will be line number seven, and after the function call over, it will come to the next line of the function call. So this will be executed next. This will be my eighth line of execution. This is how the execution happens. Now let me run this code for you and you can see Edison and Samuel. I'll tell you why it is Edison and Samuel. So when my outer function f u n uh, outer fun is called, it goes here, initializes the value to name, it remembers the value there and then it comes here. Now inner fun function is called, it comes here and then name. This becomes a local variable which has the higher scope which will be initialized to uh, Edison. This will never get touched, right? And say print name, Edison will be printed. And when uh, after completing the function call, it will go to the next line, print name, right? So this is the scope of this. This name will come under the scope. So it will print Samuel here and then comes out. Now, if I want to change the name, right? Uh, inside the inner function, I want to change the name, uh, value of the variable name, right? Is it possible, right? If I do it directly, it will consider it as a local variable, right? So if I don't want that to consider as a local variable, I'll be using a... Uh, keyword called as non-local right non-local I'll say name so when I say non-local name it will never create a new variable called this name rather it's going to use the outer functions variable name and then initialize it so when I print here let me clear the screen for you when I run this code and print it you'll be getting Edison and Edison again because when I say non-local name it is not a local variable of the inner function rather it's going to take the variable of the outer function and then reinitialize it to edison so when i print here this also prints edison when i print here that also prints edison i'm done with this video guys uh, if at all you have any doubts or queries please comment in the comment section i'll definitely get back to you and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel thank you very much